Hello everyone and welcome to Prof Talks. In today's presentation, we'll have a look at the 483 observations issued to the Zydus Life Sciences Trial Formulation Facility for the US FDA inspection conducted in April 2024. There are total 10 483 observations. Kindly note that this presentation is solely for the purpose of learning. The inspection was conducted from 15th April to 23rd April for seven working days. So it was conducted by inspectors Justin Boyd and Anastasia Seams. This 483 observation is an 18 page report consisting of 10 483 observations. Before moving ahead, please ensure that you have subscribed to the channel Prof Talks and have pressed the bell icon so that you can receive the notification of the upcoming presentations. The first 483 observation is mainly related to inadequate investigation and it consists of three subbits. The first point includes that investigations for the cross-contamination were inadequate and they did not thoroughly evaluate all the impacted batches. So there was one investigation related to cross-contamination of the injectable products and it was identified that it was due to the inadequate cleaning of the shared manufacturing equipments like the manufacturing vessels, holding vessels, filling pumps, etc. The analysis of the injection batches detected the presence of the unknown impurity peak which was consistent with the cross-contamination. So these batches, they had that percent limit of the unspecified impurity for the OOT and were released for the US market without justifying the presence of cross-contamination. It says that following batches were manufactured on the shared equipment. So uh, an example which is a redacted example is given for which an OOT was observed and batch was rejected. The next batch in the sequence in this impurity related to cross contamination was detected and batch was not commercialized. The next batch impurity related to cross contamination was detected and batch was not commercialized. However, the other two batches of the injectable batch was released to the US market with an expiry date of XYZ when the testing did not detect this impurity. And again, the next batch OT for an impurity related to cross contamination was identified and batch was rejected. So the investigation failed to thoroughly assess whether that particular batch should have been released because the batch is manufactured before it and after it detected cross contamination. Also, the investigation did not identify which equipment was causing the cross contamination. The next subbit says batches filled following the batch which caused the cross contamination in 2021 were not evaluated with analytical methods that were shown to be capable of detecting that impurity. Only the chromatograms of the existing methods were evaluated for the presence of atypical impurities and these batches were sent to the US market. Also, the investigation did not consider the carryover between batches of the same product. There was no evaluation if residues remaining on the equipment would have led to increased impurities in the initial vials of the subsequent batches. After the cross-contamination investigation, the next investigation referred in the observation is reference to the particle type A glass particles resulted in the yield deviation or they exceeded the defect category limit of the glass particles during visual inspection. So deviation was opened in which it was stated that the percentage yield was found out of limit as the lower yield was found to be the result of increased rejection rate of glass particles during visual inspection. So it was investigated and it was identified that the most probable root cause is glass while lot to lot variation. There was a kappa initiated and the kappa stated that increasing the visual inspection time of these vials as were determined as difficult to inspect. Referring to this glass particle deviation, the common investigation dated 29 July 2022 was opened for exceeding the action limit of glass particles during manual visual inspection. So each batch was 100% visually inspected and a table has been given for the three batches which was visually inspected into a redacted format. So the AQL on the round of 100% visual inspection, the batches were released to the US market. As a part of investigation, samples were sent for microscopic analysis at the third party laboratory. The results determined that the particles were glass that is same type as the vial and the size ranged provided from 51.02 to 187.61 micrometers. The lot of glass vials used to fill the product was found to be common between the three batches. Though the determine investigation determined that most probable cause was lot to lot variation. 
so the investigation failed to assess other potential sources of glass generation like the product formulation construction of the vial storage condition of the vial of the finished drug facility a deviation was again opened in september 2022 when the rejection rate of glass particles exceeded the alert or action limit so there were total four batches which were 100% visually inspected and based on aql they were released to the us market the investigation identified a lot of vials which was common among the batches uh, which was under investigation and it was sent for characterization and particle size determination so the investigation concluded that the analysis confirmed that the particles were glass with a variation in the size range from 33 micrometers to 312 micrometers it was determined that the particles were attributed to a specific lot of vials used for manufacturing of the batches and the root cause was determined as material however again in may 2023 after the release of the above batches a deviation was opened Uh, when vials purchased from an alternate vendor and used in production also resulted in a batch that exceeded the action limit of particulate type a glass particles so for the overview of the glass particle deviation the 483 states that as per the deviation investigation in the earlier investigations the root cause was identified as lot to lot variation in the glass vials however higher percentage of glass particle rejections were found out of limit after changing the glass vial manufacturer So based on that the firm investigation inferred that a lot to lot variation in the vial alone may not only be the contributing factor. So the subsequent investigation included a study executed recently in Feb 2024 wherein the injection was filled into an alternate vials instead of glass vials and identified a significant reduction in the rejection rate of the glass particles. So based on this finding the investigation inferred the propel cause of the glass particle in the previous batches was due to interaction between the product and the vial. Following this study the firm made a decision to reject the batch based on the number of vials found to have glass particles exceeding the limit for the determination of the source of glass particle was most probably related to an incompatibility or an interaction between the vial and the drug. The firm also made a decision to cease the manufacturing of the product tract in the vial due to the source of glass particle contamination remaining undetermined. However, the previous batches which were released into the market which had the out of limit glass particles were permitted to remain into the market. The second observation is a kind of a serious observation related to the established sampling plans and test procedures not followed. So there's test procedures given like sampling and testing procedure maybe of some system and the quality monitoring of some water system or a utility system so it was not followed the scheduled samples from specified sampling points were not collected however analytical records were made available to document the samples were collected and used for testing even though microbiology person confirmed that samples were not collected So this was reported from around April 4, 2024 to April 13. There were personnel that participated in the sampling and have uh, done on the many occasions during this time period participated in collecting and documenting the samples. So they gave an example on April 12 and uh, on 2024 an employee collected extra bio burden sample. Though the extra sample were represented as points which were not sample. Then the documented samples for points which reported to have been collected from the other points. the employee that collected the sample was a fixed term employee not qualified to collect the sample or enter the production area the signed sampling records indicated a second employee has been the sampler even though that employee confirmed that they have not collected the sample the analytical records contain sampling start and end times that did not correlate to the actual activities also the sampler in the records was aware that samples they signed for were not collected from the actual location and identified that this was a practice that has been occurring on the occasion for the past 4 months the examples continued where employee collected extra samples and reported it to be collected from a different point so in this case the employee that collected the sample was still under qualification and was directed by a qualified analyst to sample this way to avoid more difficult to sample points also on the same day the analyst under qualification has documented to have collected separate samples for the purpose of analyst qualification however samples were not observed to be collected and again samples were uh, found to be collected from easier point to access and not the actual point and they were uh, analyst acknowledged of creating records that samples were not collected during interviews with the employees the responsible sampling during this time they provided inaccurate statement or refused to answer the questions 
the second subbit of the established sampling plan not followed so it was related to the procedure for the operation and calibration of hplc which requires documented authorization to use different processing methods within a sequence the documentation made lacks the specific details of what was reviewed and what was found to be inappropriate that justified different processing methods that include addition of manually entered time integration events into the processing method the third 483 is related to the processes which determined to be prevent and uh, microbiological contamination they, they lacked the adequate validation of the aseptic process so there was airflow visualization study which was conducted in june 2021 under the dynamic condition which failed to demonstrate unidirectional airflow during the interventions so it gave an example of the rabs where, where the smoke was found to absorb flowing out of the rabs and into the air intake duct located near this so airflow on the line was not visible and thus it was not able to be evaluated for unidirectional airflow so it basically also questioned the design of the uh, rab system and the unidirectional flow of the smoke the fourth 483 observation is related to the procedures designed to prevent microbiological contamination uh, as not followed so there is an example of clean room and aseptic behavior Uh, SOP, which was not followed to ensure that sterile components are contacted only with sterile forceps, and aseptic manipulations are performed from the site so as to not to disrupt the laminar airflow. So there are two examples given. During an intervention to adjust the stopper bowl alignment during the aseptic filling process of a U.S. market batch, the operator allowed the wrap gloves to contact the sterile stoppers. The stoppers were subsequently returned to the stopper bowl. During the observation of aseptic filling activities of the U.S. media fill. so the wrap gloves were observed to pass over the stopper bowl during the assembling over the stopper bowl and stoppers during change of environmental monitoring plates and over open vials during removal of fallen vials into the incoming vial area the fifth observation is related to the failing of establishment of return procedures for adequate production so the process validation of the products uh, for the us market products of the injectables did not evaluate whether the proper integrity of container and closure is achieved and maintained after stoppering throughout the batch so there were six batches to the us market where complain were uh, identified that dose was not being able to be administered properly there have also been no destructive or uh, non destructive testing for any of the products to show the presence of an appropriate integrity none of these investigation evaluated whether the vials has an appropriate uh, integrity or not there was no evaluation of retains or data collected from validation or commercial batches to demonstrate the vials had appropriate integrity and were stoppered completely to prevent ingress of the environmental air the second point states that the process validation studies do not establish the statistical sampling plans that allow for evaluation of inter batch and intra batch variability also there was no acceptance criteria to evaluate intra batch or inter batch variability are established and uh, three examples are given for the same the second bit states that the uh, the process performance qualification studies for the us market product did not include an evaluation of intra batch or inter batch variability nor do they include acceptance criteria for variability the process performance qualification was approved without evaluating potential source of variability or addressing the variability of the result and examples of test for uniformity of dosage unit and test for total impurities is provided so six observation is related to aseptic processing areas are deficient regarding system for monitoring the environmental conditions so the observation includes uh, the non viable particle count system where a continuous monitoring is uh, done however it showed frequent communication errors the errors occur when the unit fails to have an adequate wifi signal or power to the nvpc is lost leaving the gaps in the ability to report the continuous nvpt data these communication errors were first documented into the maintenance notification in 2020 but no effective action was taken to ensure nvpc data is available continuously so there are few examples given where there were around 49 communication errors 45 communication errors 54 communication errors there's one procedure which requires a breakdown notification if errors continue during the patch however there's no specific instruction of the threshold that would require a notification no breakdown notification was generated for a uh, example of patches given additionally the alarms were not being acknowledged in a timely manner with comments entered to describe the activity occurring and there are few examples given 
and alarms was not acknowledged in April 2024 also. The comment was written as NA and did not assess the impact of loss of NVPC data prior to the loading of the vials. The seventh observation is related to the cleaning of equipment and utensils that they are not clean and maintained at appropriate intervals to prevent contamination. So two examples are given. One is of uh, on the line they observed to have scratches, rough surfaces and small pieces that were not fully attached during aseptic filling. And with reference to RABS, they observed to have residue during the aseptic filling. The eighth observation is related to employee training. So the firm's manual visual inspection process requires operators to inspect vials that contain the injection for the presence of glass particles. The qualification procedure includes the seeded with glass particle injectable product. However, it failed to challenge the operator on the identification of particles that are below the specific micrometer size because the investigation referred earlier into this uh, 483 observation has particle size as low as 150 microns and thus this qualification process does not ensure that uh, visual inspectors are able to detect that kind of particles. The ninth observation is the procedure for cleaning and maintenance of equipments are deficient with regard to the sufficient details. So the firm's cleaning validation master plan and the subsequent cleaning validation protocol come report of year 2020 incorrectly identified the hardest to clean or the most toxic API manufactured on the line using a non-dedicated equipment. Deficiencies are also identified in the product risk include failure to fully assess the cleanability of the individual manufacturing surfaces. The cleaning validation study failed to assess the cleanability of the APIs of the full range of surfaces by excluding uh, which is used in the construction of that particular material. The tenth and the last observation is related to appropriate controls are not exercised over computers or related system. So there is one MODA software used in the microbiology laboratory to document the sampling and the testing and the environmental monitoring. The system is intended to be integrated with a barcode scanner to populate the sampling locations and the sample information, time and data. Analysts are permitted to override the use of the scanner and make manual entries. The software is not configured with an autosave function allowing analysts to make changes to the entry before manually saving without committing the change to the audit trial. With this, we come to the end of this presentation. Hope you have liked this presentation. Kindly subscribe to the channel Prof Talks to get more information onto the pharmaceutical quality system. Thank you.